very much. We will now begin a round of five minute questions for our witnesses and I ask all of our colleagues to please keep track of the clock and try and stay within those five minutes. Um, let me begin. We, we have heard from all of you, your testimony and testimony as well of our colleagues on how bad the conditions are on the ground. I want to start by asking about impacts if Congress were to continue to delay in providing this disaster funding. And Secretary Buttigieg, I want to start with you. DOT has provided $187 million in quick release for states hit by Hurricane Helene to address some of the urgent repairs and uh, ensure the safety of the traveling public. That was a critical immediate step and it's left now, I understand the department has less than 120 million remaining for that emergency relief program. If we um, fail to act quickly, what happens if another hurricane or winter storm hits? Well, in short, we would be unable to say yes, either in full or in part to those quick release requests. We work to turn those around in a matter of hours when possible. And we have been able to say yes to 100% of those quick release requests. I'll also note that that figure, 119.6 million, uh, is not just uh, quick release, but the program balance. So in addition to those very quick uh, answers, twice a year we do the allocations for the overall fund, whether that's for recent disasters or ones going back a few years where a community is still in recovery. Uh, those two would be impacted because it's all the same funding. And so uh, very quickly, we would be simply unable uh, to support any of these disasters. Thank you. And Administrator Guzman, um, in 2024 and 2025, SBA received over 280,000 applications from disaster survivors. Um, that uh, number, I understand, is expected to increase in the coming weeks. And meanwhile, the SBA disaster loan program has been unable to originate new loans for more than 35 days, and 60,000 renters, homeowners, and businesses remain stuck in the backlog now. Talk to us about the impact of this lapse on disaster survivors and explain why we need to provide that funding now. SBA provides that uh, support for those who don't have insurance or are underinsured. Uh, in addition, these are people who do not have credit elsewhere. And so these, uh, these constituents are faced with higher cost of capital uh, or no capital access at all to be able to rebuild their lives. And so with delays, this, this further impacts them. As I said, I have nearly a billion dollars sitting there waiting to deploy as soon as I get funding, plus the additional uh, 48,000 applications that we are still processing. $30 million a day is what we approve. So the longer uh, this sustains, the, the further these constituents will not be able to access the program. Uh, and and I, I would say that you know, the, for the businesses, it's not just the businesses, it's the homeowners, the renters. 70% of our funding goes to homeowners and renters to get back in their neighborhoods. Right, and um, if uh, once we do replenish this account, um, how, how long will it take for that money to hit bank accounts for once we act? Uh, we would uh, switch back our systems from the technology perspective uh, and hope to get those awards within 24 to 48 hours. However, uh, these are loans. Uh, we would need to continue through the uh, process and finalize those, those loans to uh, disperse dollars within you know, as fast as 24 hours to up to two to four weeks. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, Administrator Criswell, the, the Disaster Relief Fund as we all know, plays a really major role in helping our communities respond to these disasters. We provided access to over $20 billion in the DERF during the CR period, and the administrator's, administration's latest request includes another $40 billion. Can you explain how the disaster programs of other agencies impact overall response and recovery efforts and how those, these potential funding shortfalls for other disaster uh, pro programs actually affect FEMA's work? Uh, these disaster programs really work as a holistic way to help communities recover from disasters. Uh, while our programs support specific areas like an individual assistance, we can give homeowners that are underinsured or uninsured some funding. Uh, our programs are not designed to replace insurance or make them whole. And that's where these other programs from USDA and SBA, CDBGDR, really come into play to have a holistic approach to community recovery. And without the supplemental disaster funding for all of these agencies, it will slow down recovery in these communities and really making it more difficult for the individuals, homeowners or renters, small businesses, and the community in general to be able to move along quickly in their recovery process. Thank you. And let me just address this spread of misinformation and disinformation. 
Just quickly, what is the real world harm um, if we see this misinformation, disinformation on communities? You know, one of the things that we have to do is make sure people have faith in their government and that they know that the programs that they're providing them are going to be there to help them. And when we spread information that is inaccurate about what we are going to do or how we administer our programs, it creates fear and people don't want to apply for assistance. And these are people that have lost everything. And we need them to be able to have confidence that when they apply for assistance, they're going to get what they need, what they deserve, and what they're eligible for. Well, thank you. And I know in the past we've seen administrations attempt to withhold disaster funding from states and communities that were affected by some of these devastating disasters. I do think I speak for every member of this committee when I say the spread of disinformation and any efforts by anyone to withhold funds Congress has appropriated for the purpose of assisting communities in their time of uh, need will not be tolerated, whether it comes in the form of a frontline worker or the highest levels of government. 